Hello everyone, my name is Pino Trogo and I am the teacher for the uh, information design data visualization class. Um, welcome everyone. Um, as you know, probably by now the class is asynchronous, so we will not be meeting on Zoom um, live or, or on scheduled meetings, okay? So, um, but I will have a couple of hours every week, like kind of a open office, open house kind of um, time where you can you know, just check in if you want. And of course you can email me as well um, anytime. And I can try to answer pretty fast. Uh, and of course you'll be getting feedback on the homework uh, via iLearn and maybe via email as well if you send me stuff. Um, so this, uh, there is an introduction uh, in already on YouTube where most of the videos are that you'll be um, that you'll be so sort of looking at, and um, that introduction was actually a workshop done about a year ago for the uh, College of, of Liberal and Creative Arts, and it's a very good introduction to the class in general. Um, it's a little more technical, so this introduction is really just to introduce myself, tell you a little bit about myself. Um, you know, I'm a real person behind the asynchronous uh, screen. Um, so yeah, again, my name is Pino Trogo and I was born and raised actually in Sardinia in what's now Italy. Um, well, it was then too. <laughs> I'm not that ancient, um, like this map of, of uh, the Roman Empire. Um, so yeah, I was born right here on this spot in this island called Sardinia, which is not Sicily. Some people think it's Sicily, but it's in the Mediterranean. Uh, it's pretty beautiful. And I uh, came to the state several times as a student and then ended up uh, coming back and, and, and becoming a citizen and so forth. So anyway, from, from Sardinia, I went to the mainland to go to college and I studied graphic design there. And when I went to uh, for a master's to Rhode Island School of Design, also graphic design, although I learned a little bit of film there. But um, let me, I showed this to my students of the drawing class earlier. Let me just show you actually a little bit of my work from um, actually my high school, because it kind of relates to, um, uh, well, we did exhibit design, which is a type of information design. Um, let's see, somewhere down here, there's pictures of some projects we did. Um, some geodesic dome, domes um, there somewhere. Um, and we had a school that had uh, woodworking and ceramics. So I went and did woodworking. And much like in the, uh, so yeah, we didn't do too much graphic design. I know this class is about graphic design, but anyway, um, much like here, we would design and then we'd bring stuff to the shop and build them, okay? Um, this was some chess sets, some toys for kids that actually helped design. Um, and um, yeah, so that was my high school. Um, and then at RISD, yeah, like I said, I did graphic design. I, after RISD, um, I worked in New York for a corporate design company. And then um, back to Italy, back to the United States. I taught at uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, which is actually in Richmond, Virginia, before moving to San Francisco. And I worked for an exhibit design company called uh, the Burley Group. Um, and we worked on projects like, um, let's see, um, the Phillips. Yeah, that was a big project I worked on, the Phillips um, um, exhibition um, hall in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, which is their headquarters. Anyway, after that, I worked for myself for about 10 years doing graphic design and um, some exhibit design. And then I taught at San Jose State for a year. And then since uh, 2007, I teach at uh, San Francisco State. And in addition to information design, I teach um, drawing right now. And I've taught letterpress too, and I've taught rapid visualization. Um, let me just show you real quick some books that I recommend. Um, actually, maybe let's me first get some bureaucratic stuff out of the way. So just in terms of the class, this will be in the syllabus, but um, 
will be the focus will be on doing simple graphs, uh, uh, scalar plots, bar charts, line graphs, maybe some more complex stuff, and of course put put that into um, a layout. And it's mostly print, although there's one project you can do anything you want, literally. Um, well, not literally, but uh, in terms of format and topic. Um, and uh, so the class this semester, I'm just going to tell you, it's going to be a little bit different from last semester, if you've heard from other students. Um, the focus in the first part of each project is going to be really on gathering the data sets, spreadsheets, you might call them, outputting some graphs for using some programs, and then making those graphs good in Illustrator, mostly, unless you're so good that you can code all the formatting and the beauty of the graph um, from the get-go. And I'll tell you right away, I'm not a fan of Tableau's graphic. I know that's a program that everybody loves um, and it's good, but the graphics I don't think are actually that good. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about that um, later. I think I sent you an email about how I don't like gray type or screen type. Um, anyway, we'll do that. And then the final part of the project will be actually putting it into a layout. And I'm assuming that you're all amazing graphic designers and layout people because you've taken all these, I don't know, seven, eight prerequisites, right? So, um, but of course I can help you with that as well. Um, and this semester, there won't be any late work. You can actually revise work for a better grade later after I give you feedback but I'm just not accepting late work. It's, it's a new thing um, I've decided after, yeah, after just having major issues with that. Um, I'll have a couple of TAs that will help me with the class uh, in part with grading. And um, I um, also gonna ask you to sign a pledge to not, um, it's, it's not as usual in this class because you, you you're all are a little bit older, um, more responsible, but um, but yeah, just just to not you know cheat essentially or copy. I guess in this class, cheating would be like cutting and pasting an image from the web, like a graph that's ready made, um, instead of doing the work of actually formatting it yourself. Um, and similarly, you know, maybe using a website where you don't even see the spreadsheet, you just. You just go to the website, punch a few buttons and comes out the graph. Well, you're not gonna get, I mean, you might get a job, but then you're not gonna be able to do that much work doing that later in that, in that job. Um, although it's possible, of course, to use other companies frameworks like maps and stuff to build your own, your own, uh, your own visualizations. That's, that's true. Um, so, um, Let's see. Yeah, so I'm just, um, yeah, there won't be like a required program to make stuff, but I'll recommend R, I'll recommend of course, Excel and, and Tableau. And sometimes though, something as crude or as basic as R, even though you have to write a couple of lines of code, gets the job done and gets what you need. And with the other programs, it's often a struggle. Um, so yeah, what I, my advice to you is just to contact me, okay? Just don't let stuff slip or um, send me stuff. I'm actually pretty good um, at responding and um, you know, sketching on top of your layout, giving you feedback and so forth. Um, so I hope you do that. I hope you don't you know, just live in this sort of parallel universe to this, <laughs> um, which is okay. I mean, I know that's why you take the class, it's asynchronous, so hopefully it works with your schedule, but um, there are pros and cons. I'm not gonna get into that now. I wish we were in school, but um, anyway, I just want to give you a couple of suggestions for books. If you happen to have a few bucks to spend, um, one is this book called Factfulness by Hans Rosling, who maybe you've seen him on you on um, TED Talks. He's got one of the early best TED Talks about uh, visualizing um, how countries have progressed in terms of their income and their um, and their sorry in their Yes, income and, and um, longevity is the wrong word. Is it longevity? Anyway, the lifespan. Um, and he has this beautiful animated graph that you can move a slider to see how each country moves, you know, better and better. Um, 
and now everybody lives, you know, above 50 years old, um, the expected uh, life. Uh, anyway, it's a great book. It's all about actually a lot of misconceptions that we might still have. Things like, you know, third world countries or developing countries and where do poor people live? And there is a, a little uh, uh, test at the beginning to, to test yourself and it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, just do it. I'm not going to say much. So that's a nice book. Um, and then um, there is a series of four books by um, Edward Tafty, um, who is, you know, who has been called the Da Vinci of data visualization. Um, his first is actually still his best. It's, uh, yeah, it's just very good. Um, so I recommend you buy these books. You can find them useful, like eight bucks, 10 bucks. Um, uh, and um, yeah, it's just, it's just, I have a couple of chapters in, um, in I learn that I will post and it's just a lot of good suggestions about how to make good graphs. For example, how to simplify bar charts. Uh, that's the first ever bar chart, by the way, by a guy named Playfair in the 17th, 18th century, I believe. Um, yeah, it's amazing. One day there's no bar charts. Next day, boom, bar charts and pie charts as well. The same guy invented them. Um, this shows, for example, how to make bars cleaner by drawing a white line on top of them, which becomes this little tick mark, as opposed to having a, a grid underneath of black, like right here, which is the original, but that's okay. He's excused, he's the, he's the inventor. <laughs> um, so that's the first book. Um, and um, the other three are these, I'm not gonna go through them now much, but it's envision, it's called Envisioning Information, um, uh, Visual Explanation, this one was signed, I went to his workshop, it's a little expensive, but if you go once, never go twice, because five years later, it'll be saying exactly the same things. Um, an analysis of the Challenger explosion. Um, and then the last one is called uh, Beautiful Evidence. Okay, they're really gorgeous books in terms of just printing, binding, care of detail, you know, off-white pages, fantastic typography. I mean, traditional, but super legible. So just for that, they're worth, they're worth getting. And like I said, they're, he's made a fortune actually self-published them after he mortgaged his house, remortgaged his house. He was a, he is, or now he's emeritus, he's a professor from Yale in statistics and graphic design. Um, last things I'm gonna show you real quick. Um, I, the first project, as you know, you've already gotten my email. It's about just uh, getting some data sets. But um, last semester was about redesigning a graph about immigration that used um, little men, what I call them, or little figure, little bathroom people, okay? These guys, you probably have seen them. They're called isotype. They were invented, more or less invented, perfected by a fellow named Otto Neurath, who is a a really important Viennese philosopher um, of the 20th century, um, but they're terrible. I really discourage you from using little people in a row, little, I don't know, strawberries in a row, ice creams in a row, whatever. Um, and in this article that was published on this journal called Visible Language, which is actually the oldest journal, um, design journal in the world, I believe, um, and it's still one of the two best journals in the US. One is the other one is design issues. Anyway, if you go to issue 52 to um, my article is actually the featured article in the website. Um, it was published at the last minute in the issue. So it's not the first in the issue, but on the website, this is what will come up. And um, yeah, and it's basically a critique. I won't go into it now, but um, I talk a little bit about it in the other workshop introduction, in the other video. Um, but I, it explains why breaking up the data into like tiny bits is actually bad for memory, bad for perception, um, and it doesn't work. Um, their, their solution was, well, once you know how much one of these is worth, 
you can just count and and you can't count all these guys it's too many so here i show how you could actually add a little label a little you know a little axis with labels which is standard to make it a little simpler sometimes little dots when they become solid are acceptable and when they're um this is actually a little interesting um, analysis of how something that might look like what you think it is may not be what you think it is and how you can have strange conflicts of perception in other words images are not universal at all forget it um nor are words of course but um anyway the article goes on and then basically as and shows some really bad examples and this is from time magazine then asks the question for example is this diagram or is this visualization showing i think it's eight dark dots and four lighter dots is that better than just writing two thirds question mark which is you know is visual it's visualized right i mean you have to look at it to see it but um obviously it's more verbal um and here i just show how uh, arabic these numbers come from arabia right or symbols from numbers come from uh, arabia you know they're used even in all languages including chinese in chinatown uh, because everybody can read them okay so that's that article very last thing a recent uh, uh, article in the new york times about why electric cars even though they cost a little more at the beginning, they're actually much cheaper or, or comparable to, um, to cars that cost much less at the beginning, okay? And that is over the lifetime, okay? So this is uh, shows uh, electric cars, hybrid cars, this is a scatter plot, and gas cars, and it's, it's plotting the cost uh, over a lifetime and the average cost per month. So this is cost per month. And this is um, emissions, okay. And this is a scatter plot and the leaf, I should say, I have, I have a leaf. It is a little more expensive than a comparable card, but it's a, it's a nice card, it's right there. Um, and the Tesla is right here. Tesla is also more expensive. Um, anyway, so this is just, you know, any car here will show you where they stand. So obviously that's better. And this is worse both in both axes, right? Um, so since you're supposed to do, actually I'm not supposed to do yet a scatter plot, although I suggested it in, the, um, in my email. Um, you have to output a series of tiny scatter plots in that one single line of code that I asked you to do for the first assignment, okay? Um, so the New York Times has fantastic graphics. I recommend it. Um, and I will, you know, bring more examples, okay? So that's it. So I will, um, I will have the syllabus uh, sometime tomorrow up on iLearn. Well, actually today, <laughs> it's already today. Um, and then I'll be in touch for everything else, okay? Thank you and welcome again to the class and I look forward to working with you all, okay, bye-bye.